Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make some simple thematic or chloropleth maps in R. We're going to be using the plot function, which is an easy way to, it's probably the easiest way to make plots, but it only, it's fairly constrained, so you don't have as much flexibility as you do with some other plotting options, but it's very easy, to, comparatively easy to make maps and plots with the plot function in R. These are the two, the two libraries that we need to load up, and now we'll We'll open up or import a shape file and, tr and project it. So our, we need RGDAL for the opening this up, and then in, when you open up RGDAL, it also installs other packages into R so that you can use other functions. But anyway, this is what we'll do just to get the data loaded. And, and the next thing I want to do is actually look at the distribution of the variable that I want to plot. So normally in a GIS, if you're mapping these things out, this stuff is done with pointing and clicking in R, we have to type it out, but it's not that difficult. Here, I'm creating a histogram of a variable that I want to map. And I'm doing this so that I can identify some breakpoints. These are the breakpoints that will define where the, how the color ramp will be displayed. So I'm doing this manually. You don't have to do this manually. You can actually write a little function to s select these breakpoints for you. There's lots of ways to do it, actually but I'm going to do it manually here. So I've just picked these breakpoints and I'm going to put the breakpoints in a vector. The next thing I'm going to do is use this color brewer library to create a character vector that's comprised of a, a range of colors. Now I want four colors, I specified four colors, and I want them to be green. So these are going to be four greens going from light green to dark green and I don't have to select or to find them myself, Color Brewer will find a range of colors. Um, there are other ways to do this, and you can, of course, manually impute colors in there if you want, but this is a nice way to get a range of colors that's somewhat customized but doesn't require a lot of work. The next thing I want to do is select some break labels. So these are things that are going to go onto a legend, and they're going to basically tell me how the breakpoints correspond to the colors on the map. And if I've done this right here, we should see the color range uh, work like this. The first color will be 0 to 100, the second color 100 to 200, the third color 200 to 400, 300, and then the fourth color will be 300 plus. So these do look different than the breaks up that I've set up here, and it has something to do with the way that the breakpoints work in R. Now, I have not looked very carefully at this, so it's possible that I have this wrong, but the general idea here is correct. So, so you have to maybe play around with this a little bit. If, um, to make sure that it's right, but I think this is correct. The final step is the actual making of the plot. And there's a few steps involved here. Obviously, we're going to call the plot function. The first argument of the plot function is the object that we're going to be plotting. And then the color is going to be based on this color ramp. So this is a character vector, and we're going to select elements in that character vector. You can see the square brackets here. And it's going to select them based on this find interval function, which is basically going to identify the breakpoints here in this variable. So where are the values in this variable? Uh, again, there are lots of ways you can do this. I find this to be a nice general approach. And using this all inside ensures that we don't have any uh, miss any, any observations that miss, like at the margins using all inside forces, basically marginal values at the highest and the lowest values in into the range of data. So this will generate the plot, and then we can use this function here to generate the legend. So so we'll just run this these these this code right now. And we should see the map. So here we go. We've got the we've got the map and it's broken down in the colors and if I've done it right, if I've set all these intervals right, and the intervals are correspond to the map, mapped intervals well, then they should ma match up. If they don't, you can easily tweak it um, by shifting the index around and, and playing around with it a little bit. But this gives you a sense of an easy way to generate that simple chloropleth map with a legend. You can change, there's all sorts of parameters that you can change in here. For example, instead of top left, you can go bottom right. I believe that will change the let's just delete this graphic and do it again but this time we'll put the legend in the bottom right you can shift it around there's actually a lot of legend control you don't even have to use this 
you can specify the actual coordinates of this object on the legend if you want. So that's easy enough to do. You just have to find the 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 dimensions of this this um, the x and y coordinates of this this displayed area in order to do it. But you have a lot of control over this to shift this around as you like. Obviously, you can change the color ramp. You don't have to use greens. You can select reds, run the whole thing all over again, and it'll generate another map for us. And this time, it's on reds. So you can play around with these kinds of things, keeping this template kind of as the basis from where you're working. And of course, you can do things like add titles and, and, and other elements too. To make really advanced maps, this plot function might not be as useful, but I find it easy enough to make pretty good simple maps that are often what we're creating in practice. So that's all for now. Bye.